why we have a little kid. Yeah. 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 We're getting the words. Me? Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming tonight. We got a big crowd. Not a lot of the agenda, but we got a big crowd. Uh, visitors. Anyway, Mr. Dolan. I want to thank the, the BOS for attending our meeting last night. It was really much appreciated. I'm glad you put the O in between the B and the S. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the BS. <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't know. <laughs> It was a good meeting. Thank you for inviting us. No, it was actually no, four out of five to John Delay before there. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I'd just like to remind the Board of Selectmen that on the 29th of November, I pointed out that the um, charter had been changed to, from May to shall regarding a merit system. At that time, you said it had been referred to, to uh, town council. I wonder if you could update us on that. Uh, also, I know the finance, um, the budget, not the budget, the financial system uh, was delayed. I'm just wondering if that's going to be up and running for the new fiscal. Okay. Yeah, sir. Who else? Who will next? March 5th, 2014. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for March 5th, 2014. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Tom's session motion carries. <coughs> Resignations and appointments. <clears throat> it says on the agenda uh, resignation of two student members from the uh, <clears throat> Inland Wetlands Commission. It's actually uh, Donna Krasowski is, is an alternate, and, and Nicole uh, Kana Kanya is a student member. And it's been requested by the uh, commission through the chairman, um, and they've been notified that, uh, that, that they accept their resignations because they have not been able to attend. So was Miss um, Kana a uh, uh, Student. But not in voting. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion on that. I make a motion. We accept the um, resignation of Don Kostowski and Nicole Connor from the Inland Wetlands Commission. Okay. Second. Here we go. All in favor? Opposed? Session is the motion carried. Uh, in the, in, because of the timing, and I think we're going to have a lengthy discussion with item five on the agenda. Um, well, let me finish resignation appointment. I'm going to consider moving the uh, state rep casino up on the agenda. Well, item five, I want to, I want to uh, speak about the MOA we talked about with the police contract, the memorandum of agreement regarding the 4-2 schedule okay. and a committee being formed. Uh, uh, Selectman Bender volunteered to be part of that committee. I went to the police commission uh, Monday night and was received with open arms. Um, and the commission has a, a recommended that uh, Commissioner Kim Neri Simicini be appointed, as well as uh, Chief Lowry, and because it's a three six person committee, which apparently me is a tiebreaker. And the union has uh, requested that uh, James DePietro, David Cairns, and Natasha Pachillo be it's three union and it's three from the town side. Who's the third from the town side? Todd. It's Todd. That's, I wouldn't call that. Well, that's the, in, in, the town side. in the MOU, it says an administrator for the police department. Well, I think there should be a third member from the town side. That's okay. the agreement that we just approved last week, or a couple weeks ago when we approved the contract. So it's an administrator. It's, so administrators theoretically represent management. I'm just one town representative. I mean, you've got a police commissioner, the police chief, and three well, they officers. It's three and three. That's how it works. And that's what we approve. I mean, we approve the contract. So this is to approve the committee. They roll forward. Okay? I don't like it. I don't well, like yeah. it. I think there should be more representation we from the town side of the uh, equation. Well, I didn't know it was going to be Todd Lori sitting on this. Well, it would be Todd. It would be Major, Major Carbone. And they decided to have Todd sit and Major Carbone be there to provide information. So. I'm, you feel the same doesn't want to be on it too. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm the tiebreaker, so it's okay. Um, I'm not sure I trust you either. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. So 
So I need a, I want a motion to uh, approve that committee. This was discussed at the police commission. Yeah. On in. Downstairs, well. yeah. On in. Um, I'll make that motion. They wanted more than that, believe me. We couldn't because it wasn't enough. Right. We can't table this till next week. No. Nope. We gotta get moving on. We have a deadline on this one. The one there's another commission that we're gonna table that we're not gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak about we're not gonna do it anymore. Second for discussion. Second for discussion. Okay. So what's so you think that the having a police commissioner? I think there should be more open-minded individuals involved with the decision. Um, I mean, I love that you're on it. I think that's wonderful. The decision basically is that we're going to allow them to do a fourth schedule on a trial basis. Right? That's in the con that's in that agreement. No, it's not. It, that is. No, it's got to be structured based on what the committee recommends. That's not what's in the end of the contract. There, it's touched on, but it's there's no decision. There's nothing saying that. Yeah, memorandum of agreement. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't there's say that they're going to try it. Right. And then there's going to be a recommendation from the committee. I don't have it with me, but I would base it differ that it doesn't say that there will actually be a trial. There'll be a trial basis. I remember if, you saying that. If they don't, but I don't if, if the trial that. basis doesn't work. For some reason, whether the town says it's too much money or it's whatever, then there's a reopener in the contract just for wages. If the town decides not to continue with the schedule. And you know and I know that anything that gets its foot in the door <coughs> is pretty much a done deal. The I just want to have... remind you of these board finance appointees, though they're only on until November. Well, guess what? You know, um, once once the program is instituted, it's very hard to get a board of finance appointment. <coughs> That was just your argument to me when I had a problem with the work finance point. Oh, they're only not total better to the budget. Well, very well, that was that was a big strong foot in the door for that budget. But I just it's it's a debate, but it was agreed to as part of the contract. Does does do people here understand what this four two scheduling is? Four days on, two days off. Yeah. At the right. police department. It's pretty simple. As a lot of towns do it. What they go five and two? We're we're five two hybrid, what mm -hmm. they call it. Yeah. A lot of towns do four two. Mm -hmm. Some towns do five and three. Right. Yep. And and and, and the, the, the union side seems to think, and they've run their numbers, they seem to think it'll cut down overtime, it'll do a lot of things that are positive, and obviously the administrative side thinks that it won't. So anybody can make numbers, as I always say make numbers look the way they want them to look, okay? But unless you actually try it, you don't know. And if it works, God bless it. Great. Are this the same, work number work? Work? <laughs> huh? same number of hours in the work week? They're, that's the, that's good what the committee is going to be determined. Is it an eight-hour shift? Does it go to a nine-hour shift? Do go to two twelve? How many hours in the week? How many hours? It's still a 40-hour work week. <laughs> there will be some additional days off, but then the committee is going to have to decide, do we get those back in training days? Because right, right now we pay for training. So do they have to give that back training days? Well, they, they also get 13 days for holiday. For holiday. Right. And they get paid for it if they work. But that, comes out of, that, but that comes out of this committee. All this stuff comes out of the committee. And you know what came on it. Are these factors that are going to be in consi considered and determined before the implementation trial period? The implementation, starts? before the implementation, all this has to be worked out. So they were shooting for July, but that's probably not. June 1st. No, June 1st is the date for coming up with right. how we doing it. Right. And then how long are we going to try it for? Right. So we got to get going. And there could be positives or negatives. <clears throat> and if the positives are the positives, good. Then we just keep going with it. If there's negatives, we open a contract back up and based on the wages, and we, we could we could renegotiate the wage down for that last year of contract. I, 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 nothing ventured, nothing gained. I hate to say it again, but you know we're stuck in the same old way, the same thing we do all the time, and you know that's the way the police department is running now. Todd's used to running it the way the foreigner ran it, and you know quite frankly, there's not a lot of people happy down there. So I think you got to look at change, and if you don't want, if you don't want to explore it, then we're stuck where we are. We're in a row. And the Clinton Police Department is not an anomaly compared to other police departments in the state of Connecticut that do this. Why are we different? Why well, can't we, we try it? We can go. Okay. And you can. Okay. All right. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Again. And, yep. and I would like it noted that my objection is 
based on um, the makeup of the committee. Okay? Separate thing. Separate thing. I can. I can't kill him. I don't want to mind. Okay. Actually, I haven't achieved mine. He's not in favor either. So I don't know why you would object to that. Well, what does mean to be an executive committee? No, it's the working out of it is a public meeting. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Moving on beyond that, we also. And I'll get to this during selection. We also select, discussed another committee, but I'll do that during selection's report. Okay. All right. Uh, now I'd like to move, in the, in the, in the sake of time, item six to uh, go ahead of item five on the agenda. Any motion for that? Yes. Okay. I move we move item Only six. Better. <laughs> so great. Right. Right. All in favor. Okay. Aye. Opposed? No abstentions. No motion carries. All right. Hey, Representative Asino is here with some uh, dignitaries. And, here we go. Uh, you like to give us a state of the state. Uh, state uh, state welcome to everyone here. I appreciate coming. We have uh, Joe Eritz. He's the majority leader for the House Dems. Patrick Chantel. Patrick Chantel, he's a political advisor. Uh, I work with both of these gentlemen at the Capitol, and I appreciate, appreciate all their help. Joe has a tie to the town. His son is a coach on our high school football team. So, uh, you know, he likes the town hall. He got kicked out of the, where we have the, uh, the meetings. They got a good uh, team. <laughs> one of the first things I wanted to mention was the governor's budget, which will restore funds to Clinton for all of its government and school uh, figures coming down from the Capitol. So everything has been uh, approved so far. And according to the governor, it looks like the payments to the town will be, will be restored. Be flat. Be flat. Right. Uh, a couple of other things that I wanted to bring the board up to, the uh, train station in Clinton, I had a meeting with the Department of Transportation. A lot of people have contacted me about the new train station. It looks like there isn't a new train station. There's several projects going on it's within the state. Now, there's plans for a new train station. We've attended meetings for a new train station, but at this point, there's no train station. Not funded. Not funded. At this point, uh, the DOT uh, Commissioner Jim Redeker told me there's going to be a crossover track installed at the station which, which uh, trains will uh, change tracks, which will improve access to the whole area of Shoreline East. The uh, Westbrook train station is, is just about finished. They're having a problem with the uh, elevator. That will be opening soon. That will relieve some of the congestion, along with a new parking garage that's being proposed in New Haven. Right now, if you go to the New Haven station, the parking is all tied up, you have to get there very early, or go to a different train station. So by these uh, Shoreline East issues being straightened up, it will improve the flow for a lot of people that live in Clinton, and they'll be able to travel throughout the state, cutting down congestion on 95. So a couple of things with Morgan, I had a meeting on Friday with Deep, Willie. Right, not going to be sure. Yeah, so, I mean, we were told we were going to get the central station, yeah. and then, uh, but it, we were told we were after Westbrook, right. and then the last right. I heard was they decided to do Brantford instead, so they are doing um, that type of work. We're just not receiving well, that. I, well, I take the vow. Is Saber sad? Yeah. Westbrook's got Westbrook. why, why are we going to step out there? Because that parking lot. Yeah. I, 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 I met with him about three years. I met with the, uh, the DOT about three years ago, and there was pl there's plans drawn up, pictures, drawings. We had a public hearing. Yeah. We had a public hearing here, and after they finished and the I stations. Know, I've, been, I've, been, I've been communicating with Keith Hall. Absolutely. We have, we have pictures at the time. Right. And the point is, this is a very popular. I understand. Yeah. I, get a lot of, I get a lot of calls and letters about the train station. And we've got spaces on the other side that we could I be understand. using if there was access. There was, all the plans are in place, but at this point, they're at this point with the commissioner of DOT, there's no plans to build a train station on the site at this point. So I know you're disappointed, but we'll see what happens. Things can change very quickly. As far as the uh, Morgan School project, I'm on the phone with Willie constantly about that. Uh, Deep and Willie just had a, a meeting to wrap up some of the final documents to get our final certifications for the project. The final language for the bill will be looked at at the end of the session so that we can wrap up the grant and vote on it. So everything is going in the right direction. That's for the space waiver. That's for the space waiver. So at this point in the game, everything that the town was responsible to 
perform and send off to the state and all of the uh, departments and agencies has been done. So we're getting very close to completion. Also, I Joe, think I don't want to just comment real quick. Okay, go on. <laughs> Not happy with the state agencies. And, you know, and Dan and I have known each other for a long time, and part of his thing going in was it was going to make it easier. Well, it's been, it's harder. Uh, they, it sat at 90 days at, at the Department of Construction Services in the hands of this guy that I'm probably going to ask for his job to be removed when we get through this process. And then the DEP sat on it for 59 days, having 60 days to review, and called us the 59th, the 59th day only because I called somebody up there and said, oh, well, we're not going to look at it until you get this. And, and I think it's, it's horse crap, and I mean, it's, it's really frustrating. So you're saying they waited to tell they wait till, days to tell you that there was a piece of that they were waiting process for. that And the piece they were waiting for, some of the stuff they were waiting for was supposed to have been sent down from Department of Construction Services, because they had a complete package that he was forwarding after he reviewed it, the deed. And the stuff they were missing, he had. It's just not an efficient operation. But I'll be writing letters after we finally get through it and we're out the bid. There'll be some letters going out and I'm looking for At heads. this point, the town has done everything they need to do to put this together. We're going to wait until the end of the, sh the session. It's coming up on May 7th. And at that point, everything looks like we're going in the right direction. We get the space fair. It'll be very helpful. Everything's going good. Because former Speaker Donovan got it for merit, so I expect that you're going to pull this in for us. And Joe, you had problems with your high school also? I did. I, we had a similar process over in Berlin. Well, I know. So, yeah. I know. I caught that. Every step up. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, a couple of projects that I've been in, in tune with. The recreational sea f uh, shell fishing mm -hmm. off of Clinton has been banned. I've put together Rod LaFrance from Deep and Wayne Church for meetings. Uh, the Department of Ag is going to be attending some meetings also. I understand also. that was because of the hurricanes. Well, there's a, there's a few problems with not only the hurricanes, but the way the whole area was designed. All of the houses on top of each other with all of the situations with the sanitation systems that you're aware about. So by bringing the Department of Ag in with Wayne Church and his group that will attend meetings and the Deep, deep in the Department of Ag, we can get down to the basics and figure There's out... There's a lot of misinformation out there. After Irene and Sandy, particularly, the uh, Department of Aquaculture, which is within agriculture, uh, was, was, was told that the, the systems that were exposed during those mm -hmm. storms were just mm -hmm. covered over. Nobody did any of them. When in fact, we know every one of those... Yeah, they, they, were they, they were fixed. They were fixed, they were repaired, this and that. They were very close together in permits for recreational shellfishing before Irene. And after I ran into Sandy. Well, the shellfish beds were all seeded, right? That's, I mean, that's in the Hammock River, and that's out here. That's that was not off the shore. I thought they were shellfish. Two different areas. We never did soft We never did soft, soft shells. Well, it was everything was going in the right direction. By getting the agencies together with our local commission, we'll be able to get to the bottom of this, and in the future, we hope that we'll have recreational fishing, shellfishing back to Clinton. I buy the bodies. Uh, also, the, uh, I've discussed with Willie and Deep the Unilever settlement. We are going to be planning a public hearing which Deep will come down and discuss the settlement and we can talk to the public to see exactly what we're going to do with the money. So that's coming up very soon. So no, no final decision has been rendered about uh, what well, to April 4th, they go, it goes to the, for the final decision of the judge to be signed. Wait, April 4th, when is this we're planning, we're, we, we're planning to put a meeting in May. In May. April 4th is the final decision. The, the, unfortunately, Senator Meyer, working with Madison, they, they, they filed a, a plea on behalf of the town of Madison saying that they were damaged as well. Even though we just signed off, or they just signed off on, on oysters in the shellfish beds right off of Cedar Island, they're damaged as well. They want to share the money. Of the uh, 500000 or the 3.5? The 500000 500, Okay. That's my position. Is there's 3.5? Why we give them all this money to Yukon? Throw Madison a half a million. If you can give us half a million, give them half a million to make it go away. Today I was on the phone with Deep, and it sounds like the U.S. Attorney's Office is looking at splitting our five with Madison. And I talked to Fillmore, the first like of Madison this afternoon. He's not happy. And I'm not happy. To do with it? So I went right up to Ben, and I said, Ben, we, we should just go right after him. Now we should appeal that. We, there's well, no way. 
a three and a half million, a three million dollar study, because I hate studies, you know I hate studies. Spending money on studies is like drawing, throwing it against the wall and it doesn't do anything. Why are we give a UConn three million dollars to study something? Let's just let, let's make things happen. And so we're probably going to appeal that. Ozzy Inglis told me today that that's what the U.S. attorneys, because they want to reopen. So take our money, split it in half, and give it to Madison. And Fillmore's not happy either. How are they involved in Aiden's Creek? Well, they have exposure. Because there's a discharge at the Hammonassa River, which yeah, is correct. They're on the other right. side. But right. which comes out? We have a third. State yeah. has a third, and Madison has a third, well, right? Well, water touches both sides. That's the issue. That's the issue. But we're going to wait till after the uh, beginning Although, of April. Mr. Dolan, when they did the testing, what did they find? They didn't find any hard metal. They didn't find any, any chemicals. They found That's coli, right. which That's the right. coli is probably as a result of the septic systems that are run along there. Oh, mm -hmm. Possible. It's probably not the discharge that came out of Um, I just want to say that anybody who has spoken to me about this settlement of $500,000, mm -hmm. theoretically, for the town, no one is a proponent of that fish ladder idea. That's that not our money, though. That's not Clinton's money. That state owns that property, remember. So it's not part of the 500000 The 500000 there's a million. 500000 went to Chapman Mill Pond, which the state took out from under us with the Shawnee property okay. purchase. That's to build the fish ladder and repair the dam up there. So they said it was for Clinton, okay. but it's not really for Clinton. Okay, and then there's an additional 500000 There's an additional 500000 beyond that. They're not touching that money for that piece. We haven't ever discussed this before, but what we're going to get together in May was that out of the five hundred thousand no. dollars was going for there a was million. There's a million. There's a million. Half a million was going over there. You Half a million was the town for project. Okay. All right. Right. Which they think the lagoon closure would be a good project. Yeah. Uh, and sometime in May, we'll have a public, <laughs> public, public hearing. We'll bring everybody up. Up to speed on what's going on. We'll you were happy game plan, right? I'm yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> you know, the other thing was uh, the Hesser's Pond. We were talking about some maintenance and some repairs at Hesser's Pond. In the month of May, we're going to set up a meeting with the first selectman and myself and Deep to do a tour of the Hesser Pond to see what we can do as far as making some repairs to the area. Um, Another project, which According to Ozzy, could be that some of that money should be used. Well, we're gonna, that's what we're going to we're going to have the public hearing for. We're going to address the issue, go from there. Um, Alan Kravitz has been in touch with me about his plan of conservation. He'd like to get somebody from deep to come down and attend his meeting for some consultation on the wastewater housing issue as far as his program is going. So we're working on bringing somebody down for that. Um, the grant that I co-sponsored on the streetscape is going in the right direction. The construction of that will be happening anytime. And as of now, we were, we, uh, Willie and myself got together on the Morgan sidewalks and we've submitted a package to the state to see if we can bond the sidewalks in front of Morgan. So that's something that, that's coming up after the new school is built. <coughs> So that, that wraps it up with the town information. Uh, there's a couple of interesting bills at the Capitol that we've talked about this table. One of them was the public notices that we're debating in uh, e and In about 48 hours, you'll be reading about a decision that's coming out on that that will start to say... Am I going to have to retake my virus test? No. That's it. That's it. That's it. The public notices that cost the state about $4 million a year. We pay in the newspaper. In the newspaper. Whenever the public notice, and I'm sure if I remember from the old budgets, it was about a $25,000 cost to the town. We've been looking at that. I'm a member of the Moore Commission. Uh, we're looking at ways of saving taxpayer money, saving money with property tax, special aid <coughs> funding, car tax, and anything to do with, with uh, property tax. We're looking at little ways of bringing the price down for the property tax of the, of the taxpayer. And one of the issues at, after being on that for years, there's so many moving pieces to those little taxes that they it takes a lot of time. So at this point, this will be one of the first things that, that I see will be addressed and will bring down the price for the town just a little bit. And it's the start with, a, with uh, several other projects. Are you saying cutting back on the public? It looks to me like we're, we're, we're looking at a way of cutting down the size of certain ads to save money for the town. But we don't have a site requirement. Well, the, the newspapers are complaining that that's a big income for them as far as the, the Hartford Current goes. 
they they would have to let we go. We like to be able people. to do it electronically. There's there's a lot of different different ways of looking at it. What it comes down to is somebody that, that wants to find a public notice on a meeting will find it either way. The people that attend these meetings will find the notice and they will make it to the meeting. And it's just a way to bring the cost down. Every, everything is changing. In the old days, I had a black and white TV in my living room and I had a phone in the kitchen with a wire on it. It was called a landline. Those days are over with. We're looking at ways to, to bring the cost down. So. All kinds of little ways of bringing the cost down for the taxpayer. The um, another thing that's that's come up that would would affect our shoreline is there's a fund set up for businesses and homeowners that were affected by Storm Sandy, low interest loans for people to improve their properties, raise their properties, so that when we're, we get ready for the next storm, some of these properties will be maintained. A lot of them need to be lifted. And the government figured that instead of paying the money after the fact, let's start a fund to, to uh, help people up front. How many low-income people live near the water? Well, well, well now we're 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 people need I know it's a nice thing to say, but well, I, mean, I, I can't live near the water. I'm not Sixty-four percent of the state is affected by flood issues. And as you know, the flood insurance that we're paying, the whole system is flawed. At the last uh, hearing we had, there was a gentleman with a $3 million house that was paying $60,000 a year in flood insurance. The problem is, is there's a quarter of a million dollar cap. So even though you're paying $60,000, the most you're going to take out of it is $250,000. So that really doesn't work. If one of those houses falls apart, it's going to cost a lot more than a quarter of a million. So there'll be, be a lot more, uh, you'll hear a lot more about that. Other than that, the state budget, the governor came out with his budget, everything is going in the right direction with that. There was a small surplus that you've read about. The governor put some money towards some of our debts, the retirement responsibility of the state. So there'll be some checks going out to the public. Uh, everything came up <laughs> under the spending cap that you've heard about, approximately $8 million. At this point, since boy has been in there, he's paid off about $12 billion. And we're down about 12% of the overall debt since, since he's been up there. Other than that, uh, a couple of things I'll mention is uh, there is an express job program that if you know of any small businesses, have them apply for it, low interest money to help people put people back to work. There's a step up. Well, I will program. say again, I go back to the red tape. I've sent, pe I've sent people I up know there. You have. And I, you know, well, a lot of times. It lends. It, 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 it lends the, the, the red tape is, it is so cumbersome that a lot of them get scared. It's, it's just like going to a bank. You have to it's have somewhat good, good credit, but there's a lot, the, low, the interest rate is very low. No, I understand. So if you, if you play, by, the play by the rules, I understand. It's been a few I made years. a phone call, I bought a truck. There you go. Try to get an express loan. For Probably more money than what they were trying to get for an express loan. Okay, other than that, um, that's about all I have to say about the town. Everything is going the right direction. If there's anything that you can think of that has to do with the town of Clinton and the state, bring me up to speed. Did anyone have any questions? Can you just post those phase two somewhere, the plans of the project? I've yeah. never seen the plans. The phase, the phase two plans of what? Of um, street the streetscape. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's going right. off the bid. We want to stop the bid, it'll be on a lot of websites. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, who does the design? I mean, I, I, what Matt wants to know is It was designed plans? as part of the phase one. When we did phase right. one, we designed phase but one and two. Who plans the planting? Is that the Yale? Was that Yale? It was part of Yale and part of the uh, revitalization committee. Right. 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 No, because I've never seen the plans. Well, I, I don't have the plans, about the plans, but if you could get When we applied for the grants, we based everything on what was proposed through those I just remember seeing a big board many years ago down at, during the expo about signing up to help with this. With that's the streetscape. Right. right. That's the only time I've ever seen anything, but I've never seen, like, like the plans. Like, I want to be able to look at something and say, okay, this is what they're thinking about. Because personally, there's some things that have been done that don't make any sense. To you. So, well, to you. Well, no, it's well to you too. I mean, no, that's 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 purpose to my attention is specifically it's those uh, those uh, lilies, so the, the like dirt every dirt. piece of litter that flows down Main Street, um, shrubbery and. Uh, We've talked about it. Yeah. Well, we can adjust. Yeah. 
that would be yeah. that would be wonderful. And we it would be great if you included Meg because we all know what a fabulous garden she has and which takes care of million dollar purchase order. Uh, just you might not you may have missed it. The journal Wall Street Journal reported last week that the Bigger Waters Act has been delayed for four years, so you're in, the guy with the insurance with sixty thousand dollars. Yes, he's probably going to get some relief on that. Which uh, the, the Senate passed it in January, and the House passed it. Now they've got to well, resolve there, that. There's a lot more to this, and this is something that we really need to be paying attention. I assume they knew a lot about it when I attended a couple of these meetings. Right. But it's not just the insurance. It's the whole area is basically at sea level. Right. And when the, the FEMA requirements of 51% of your, your, your assessed value, or appraised value, 51% of the structure, you exceed that when you're doing a repair, that makes you bring it to FEMA code, which means you have to bring it up to elevation 13. That's why the houses are going up. If, you, if you look at the whole, you start from the beginning, this area was designed as an eight to 10 foot storm surge. Now we're up to about 11 foot storm surge. I, if you remember in the last storm, I-95 was shut down, rail was shut down, there were sections of it that were flooded out. That wasn't in the plan when they first designed it. That was supposed to protect the water from going that far, and it's not working. It's too expensive to move 95 with a rail, so what the plan is, little by little, as they, they perform maintenance on certain bridges and areas, they'll make adjustments to it. The other problem is a lot of our electrical and electronics it are actually built under the bridges and under the rail area. So there's a lot more to it. If you look at uh, Fenwood in Old Saybrook, you look at the Madison Clinton line, you look at Hamlin Acid. It's only a matter of time that those areas are underwater. So at this point, not only are you going to have to lift your house, but you'll have to move your house back. And if there's no place to move your house back, you won't be able to put it back there. And if you look at a lot of these areas, Ren and Clinton after the last couple of storms, there's not a lot of room back there. There's a, there's a program now in place for, for, for property acquisition that would offset the cost of the town to actually acquire the property in those areas that have the regular occurrences of flooding based on storms and storm surge. It doesn't help us in the areas where we have the rivers that flood out these houses all the time, but it, it will along the, the well, coast. We're very prone to problems. The, the other problem is the price of real estate is affected. As the price goes down, because the banks want more money for the real estate, it brings the price down. People that own homes, uh, uh, academic homes that aren't worth that much without heat and the proper sanitation, the value of the house drops so they have to sell it as property. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem that could affect and will affect our, our, our value and our mill rate down the road. In late May, I'm also putting together a flood informational meeting that will be, be held here in May so we can address some of our issues. I'm putting together a panel of experts that are going to come down and it's an informational session. We'll tell you all about what the state's doing, the government's doing, and what you can do to protect your property. Another project I'm working on that will also be here on April 7th, I'm in the process of putting together a new bus route between Clinton and Middletown. What this will do is, we really don't have any public transportation going that direction. It'll help kids going to school, it'll help senior citizens, it'll help the disabled, and it'll move people back and forth, it'll help our malls. 50% of the people that use uh, the local small buses that you see, the District 9 buses, are employees. So if we can bring employees from, say, Middletown to one of our malls, uh, people that don't make a lot of money, for literally $1.50, that'll put more money into our economy. People that take transportation and live near transportation and park their car save about 18% on their overall savings. They end up putting half of that back into the economy. It helps out our businesses, helps out the local economy, puts people back to work. So this is a, a plan I've been working on over the summer. We're just about ready to have a public hearing on April 7th. I'll be here also for the expo promoting the Express Job Program that we're having in April. And uh, two weeks ago, we had a very successful Access Healthcare. We had over 100 people. We had about 100 people. You were there. Yeah, good time. yeah, it was great. Uh, we would have had. We would have. We were trying to uh, uh, down Stanford. We have 120,000 people. They had over 100 people. We were trying to break their record, but the site crashed at about 8 o'clock in the morning for about 11. So. We lost a lot of people, but it was, it was a lot of uh, people that came through that were upset.
upset, embarrassed, they didn't have insurance, mm -hmm. they were uh, frustrated, and when they walked out of there, they were, it was like Christmas, that they all left happy, we enrolled a lot of people. So these are the kind of projects that I'm working at, and if anybody has any more questions. Just, just, just one more, Tom, would you, you uh, told me about this move to reduce the drug-free zones around schools. Yes. I think some other people might no, be. actually you told me. Well, no, you told me what, you were, what was going okay. on. I asked you about it. And I, ba somebody... Basically what that is, in the cities, there is, uh, uh, there's a school on every corner. And in the, in the city, if you get um, uh, arrested for selling drugs in the city, and say you were to get a 36-month sentence in the city, if you get arrested, say, in Clinton, Connecticut, for the same issue, it's more like an 18-month sentence because in the cities, there's school, zone, there's school zones everywhere. There's no areas they are not connected to a city. Well, you want to get them safe areas, though. Well, we, uh, I personally, um, I personally uh, I was sent up to the Capitol by parents, the police department, mm -hmm. and people that, that don't believe in that. But I understand the issue with people, people that live in the cities, where that affects people in the city. So there's a big debate coming up on that. And also it drives the price of incarceration up. 59% of, of our uh, uh, um, system are people in jail for drugs and alcohol. So what it, what it tells to me, it's an issue that we need to look at, study, and to, to debate and come up with a plan to bring the cost down for taxpayers with rehabilitation and different ways of dealing with it so that we save money for the taxpayers. But as I was, as I told several people at the Capitol, I was sent to the Capitol by a lot of school moms, and that's the way I feel. And we should keep it where it is. We, we, I, I feel that the area that we're from, we should keep it not only 1,500 feet, we should make it you know, even larger. Because, it, but there's, there's different feelings throughout the state, but I, I don't plan to back that, and you know, that's my opinion. I thank you for considering us when you develop those. Keep in touch. Yep. You've done a good job. Okay. No, you've done a good job. No, I you've appreciate it. Great job. I talk to Willie all the time. Yep. You guys you've done a great job. need you my help. You uh, definitely represent this town very well. I appreciate that. I'm trying to work hard, and I'm doing it for all the uh, the, the legislators before me, Brian O'Connor, Jim Crawford, <laughs> Eileen Daly. I looked up to them. Dolly Mazzetti, all of you here, and I'm trying to do the best I can. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you need me, give me a call. Mm -hmm. oh, right. so thank, right. you, oh, thank, thank you for coming. No, this is great. I, I, I'm standing here thinking. I, 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 I go to the grocery store to get a gallon of milk. It takes me about 20 minutes to get back home. And my wife is like, what took you so long? I said, well, remember when I was on the council, it took me about 40 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, government is local. And what you guys do here is run the town. And, and, and it's really, a, it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, that's, you got to go in disguise, right? I actually like that stuff. I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I like going grocery shopping. <laughs> I, I think in generally interacting, it's when you're just running in really quick. It's like, oh, i got to get home or something. So, That's when you go to the yeah. shell station. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned there. You've got to come up. That's right, I saw you. Yeah, you got to come up and visit his mom more. Mary Fritz. Yeah. Oh, i got to come visit her? Oh, dear God, please. <laughs> <laughs> you heard my father. When they call her and Mary or Jonah, like your father's on and your mother's on like, here goes an hour out of life. I'll never get it. Your father comes up here once a year. Oh, yeah. Once a year. And your, your mother sits up in the He's section. He's not sitting at all. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> she, says, she sits up there and she reads her book or she's... She's in court. So, so if we're if we're sharing a little bit, you opened it up. Uh, uh, it was my second term, and I was told to go go help your mom with the uh, conveyance package. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you know, I'm a bubbly little sophomore, and I'm walking up. Yeah, I'm like, hey, Mary, I'm I'm sent over. I'm supposed to help you with the conveyance package. She looks over her folder at me, and she goes, I do the conveyance package. <laughs> you can go sit down. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> and I went over and sat down, and Mary does the conveyance package. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. I had a lad I grew up with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a small world. Yeah. Every time yeah. I'm at the Capitol, every uh, elevator I come out, every time I walk down the hall, I see somebody from this area. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, ties between there. All right. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank